Yo, what's going on guys? Today, I just wanted to show you how I set up the Elgato HD. This is the old Elgato. So I'm not sure if these are still in production, but I'm gonna leave a link in the, in the description if you're interested in seeing this one. It might be cheaper than the new HD 60s and all that stuff. So I've been using this for years now, and this is the main reason uh, that I've been able to stream my PlayStation gameplay to my PC. I've been able to make my clips as well as record all my gameplay from the PlayStation without any lag or any disruptions, all thanks to the Elgato. So um, as far as showing how I set everything up, it's pretty simple. This is the in. So this is the, the PlayStation is going to be hooked up to this end that goes into the outs which is the hdmi that's going into the tv to be able to display it on the tv tv or monitor depending on what you're planning to use and then this is the usb cable that you're going to be plugging right to your usb device like right into your actual computer itself that way it can display on your your computer through your recording software you don't need to install any drivers or anything like that it's literally plug and play unless you want to use the elgato software itself it's up to you if you want to do that i use obs it's completely free to download free to use and i use this for my pc recording as well as my playstation recording here's how i i set it all up i actually set up a scene that's dedicated to playstation so when i click on it it shows up here. It says no signal because the PlayStation isn't on right now. But I'm going to show you how how I basically start it up. You, you make your own scene. You get it all set up like that. That's why I have different scenes for each thing. That way you can kind of have the PC. I can switch it over to PS4. I could switch it over to my webcam with my hair all messed up. So I can basically do whatever I want. So I'm on the PC scene, we're going to go over here and you see, once you make your scene, you're going to go to add, you're going to go over to video capture device, click on that. You're going to go ahead and create it. All right. And then from here, you're going to switch over to Elgato game capture. You should see it pop up if you have it plugged in via the USB. So you click on that, you get that running and there you go. On the PlayStation itself, you're still going to have to set up some settings. There was one setting in particular that I'm going to show you right now on the PlayStation that gave me a lot of headaches and I had to do a lot of Googling. So I'm just going to get this out of the way. OK, so the, the first thing you're going to do on your PlayStation itself, there's two things. Uh, one is optional and one you need to do in order to get it to, to pop up on OBS. So you're going to go over to settings. Go down to, and then under system, you're gonna see this right here, enable HDCP. It's gonna be check marked uh, the, by default. You wanna uncheck it because what this thing does is it's gonna stop it from actually visually showing it onto the OBS. So if you ever have any issues with the OBS never displaying the PlayStation itself, it's because of this. So disable this uh, this HDCP and you will see it pop up afterward. Once you get that set up, it's up to you how you want to have this. But for me personally, since the, the regular standard HD uh, Elgato, the old one, doesn't allow you to get 60 FPS gameplay. It's only 30 if you decide to do 1080p streams or 1080p recordings or whatever. If you want to have 60 FPS, you have to put it down to 720p. So the way you do it on the actual device, like on the PlayStation itself, is to go up to, let's see, I think it's under here. Yeah, so video settings. So it's under sound and screen, video output settings, resolution, and you're gonna put it down to 720p. This is the only way that you can get 60 FPS streams. It's gonna obviously be 720p. So if you're hurt by that and you just wanna be at 1080p, leave it on that or 4K or whatever you want. But just giving this recommendation in case you want to have 60 FPS streams. So there it is. That's how I do it. This is how I have it set up. And that's that's pretty much it from this end. So from there, you're pretty much good to go. You're ready to just start streaming, ready to start recording, doing whatever you like. Um, when it comes to the OBS software, it, you're definitely just going to have to play around with things, especially when it comes to microphone audio. You're going to have to play with it. I've spent a lot of time tinkering with all this stuff. I can show you my settings really quick so you can kind of get an idea. Under advanced, 
I got some some extra things that I put in. I put in a compressor and I put in a noise gate. The noise gate is really cool because what it does is it makes it so that whenever you you are talking too low, then that sound won't come in. And the best thing about that is that when you have the gameplay running, the way I always stream is I I don't use headphones. I don't really like the feeling of having headphones on. So I have the TV actively on as I stream. So that could land up having a lot of background noise in kind of like it, it would it would sound like it's duplicating the sound from the game itself into your microphone. And then, you know, your viewers would hear two sounds going on, which would kind of sound annoying. So the way to stop that is with the noise gate. So I have it set up like this. Sometimes I have to tinker around with it, but I, I say just play around with it. Speak into your, your microphone. See how loud you need to be in order for it to hear you. Because when you start whispering, I could just show you an example. When you go to scene, you see how I'm talking right now. If I start whispering, I'm going to... can't really hear me that much more. See how it's like kind of not really getting you see, you understand you see where it's getting so basically you have to figure out what works best for you when it comes to all of that as far as the compressor goes i put that so i can get a little bit more volume added so instead of just boosting randomly you can you can use the compressor to kind of gain your your audio just to kind of get your your microphone louder than it normally would be so this makes it so that you see how i'm getting into the red right there the red is actually really nice you don't want to cap so you don't want to hit the end so that's the, the main thing you're trying to do as a live streamer is to never touch the back because you don't want it to cap if it caps then you're going to hear that you know it's going to get real 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 tremendously louder than it should be and that's why i put the compressor is that the compressor actually stops it or it at least tries to stop it from going over the cap so that's like one of the main reasons to use a compressor is because of that so anyway that's my my setup and uh, i hope you found this helpful for setting up the elgato um if you're interested in getting it or if you're looking into getting something like this i would say do some research get online and see what's new i haven't done really any research i've been using this same elgato for years and i don't plan on buying a new one unless it was like a dramatic upgrade or something i'm pretty happy with this so i'm not going to be upgrading for a while but um anyway let me know your thoughts if you have any questions hit me up in the comment section and uh anyway i'll see you guys on the next video Later, y'all.